Hello, everyone. My name is Derek Cameron. I work on the Code Innovate team at Oracle. And we hold events with customers to build solutions in a compressed one week time frame. All of this is free to the customer. Check it out. Check out the URL there. I'll be happy to do one with you. So today I'm going to cover building location enabled applications with Oracle Apex and Oracle OAC. There's a lot of great material on how to do bits of that. It's not end to end. So today what I wanted to do was to give you really what we did with the customer recently is take their data, geocode it in batch and create an application to update and maintain that data and then to analyze the data in Oracle OAC. Uh, the agenda is to batch geocode address with Oracle Spatial Studio. There's lots of ways to batch geocode. Um, Spatial Studio is just one of those. I found it really easy to use. It can do a lot of other things as well. We're going to use Spatial Studio today. Uh, then we're going to take the Apex application. We'll show you how to maintain that special data and display address data on a map. And then lastly, closing the loop, we'll build an OAC analytics visualizations on top of the address data maintained by Apex. This is not a deep dive on each of these tools. It's really meant to be more of an end-to-end -end flow uh, covering these three different tools. And you should be able to do this and replicate this yourself. Uh, I use the customer uh, sample data. Just some point, um, important points to consider. Uh, Spatial Studio is a developer tool. It's really easy to use, I find. Has a lot of spatial functionality. I'm just gonna cover the basics of what I wanted to use it for. And again, I'll give you links on the YouTube recording for more information about it. But it'll uh, allow you to build out map layers, create dashboard pages with the layers on the maps. It can populate both longitude and latitude and the native SGO geometry data type. An Apex application as well for building those applications is typically a developer tool, although it's no code, low code development. Again, really simple to do and very powerful. It's been around for many, many years and is extremely popular by our customer uh, developer base. Uh, it has currently native support for populating the SGO geometry data type. Um, you can populate long and lat as well from your address data. There just takes a little bit of uh, some workarounds or some JavaScripting to do that. And then lastly, Oracle Analytics Cloud is an analytic platform for end users uh, to develop and deploy visualizations, share with their peer community. And while Apex and OAC are similar, when you look at the map data, OAC is really, a, it's an end user development tool and it's a lot easier to use and provides a lot of supplemental rich analytic capabilities. So let's get started. So let's start by just taking a look at the data. Uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be building an application on top of this customer data. And uh, let's just have a quick look at it. You can see it's got a customer ID and it's got address information. It's got the city uh, customer street address, the zip code, the city. Um, it is, um, it is multi, uh, multiple countries in here. And you can see that I batch geocoded it already, but I'll cover that in a minute. And you can see that it you can see the, uh, the geometry populated here on the GC geometry uh, column. Now, the first thing I did when I started this is I thought, oh, I've got to add a geometry column and I've also got to add data in the user SGO geom metadata. Now, the nice thing is that Spatial Studio does this for you. So you do not need to do these steps. Uh, I just want to point that out because it's doing, doing some things under the covers that you don't have to worry about. So let's switch over. We're going to look at how we can use Spatial Studio to do the batch geocoding. As I said earlier, there's lots of different ways to do this. I found this really convenient. It is a little bit slow. I had 55,000 rows to geocode. It has to go through all the addresses. I am running this on my home computer. And so if this was running on a compute node in the cloud, it would run presumably quite a bit quicker, but it has to basically crawl through and communicate with the database in the cloud while 
the actual tool itself is on my local drive. So just keep that in mind. Um, I won't go into the installing, configuring it. it this is it right here. Uh, pretty simple. It's just a Java, just to un unzip the Java client and you know, you have to set the Java home environment variable. I created a user. The documentation's pretty good. I didn't find it too difficult to follow. So um, let's fire it up and see how we can geocode. So this will run on Windows and Mac and, um, and Linux. I run a Linux desktop. I put it in my applications directory. Oracle Spatial Studio, and it's really simple. You just start the server, bot slash start dot sh, and once you've done that, the server starts, and it's local host Spatial Studio. Very simple. It does take a minute to start, so if you see this, don't don't get too worried. So this took probably 20 to 30 seconds for the server to start. So don't, you know, just be aware there's this lag between when you start the process and when you can log in. So I'm gonna sign in here. And I'd encourage you to look at the links on the, on the, uh, on the recording. Um, it'll tell you uh, lots of information about how you can use this tool as a, you know, as a developer. But I'm gonna focus on the flow that we've got today. The first thing you need to do is set up a connection. I'm setting up uh, a connection to an autonomous database here. Um, you know, it can be a regular uh, DBCS instance, a regular Oracle database, anything 12.2 and higher. You create, the in create that properties. You can see it here. And once you do that, you create a data set and the create data set i will not create another one but you just click here and then you can do it from a csv file or a shape file or from your database i've got mine in the database you hit create and then it presents you with the tables uh, and views and you can select one of those again i've already done that pretty simple simple to do there it is there there's our customers uh customers table it notices it's got an sdo geometry on it as do these other ones so you'll notice that it pops up with a little bit of a pin uh, pin shaped here when it when it detects that you go in here and you're going to if you're going to you're going to geocode you go down to the prepare node and you go to geocode addresses. And you notice there's some other functionality here as well. Um, anyway, let's take a look at that. Um, it just needs to pick up the primary key. Uh, it identifies a state province. So you do this mapping country to country, country ISO, state province to state province, um, postal code, Etc. So you have to go down here and do this mapping city town to customer city town. And then once you do that, right, you can uh, kick off a job to actually execute that. So once you clean, once you hit the save button, it'll kick off a job. And the jobs are down here. You can see down here the, the jobs. Actually, it's right here. There's the jobs. Um, active jobs past jobs let's take a look at that it was done and you can see the start time 10 13 to 11 41 so that's just about an hour and 20 minutes um and so yeah and then once you've done that i mean the rest of this is actually kind of gravy we're not going to be spending our time in here it's um got a lot of functionality Let's take a look at that. I just literally, I just create a project and I drag the customers onto the map and it does this just right out of the, right out of the, uh, right out of the gate. But if I wanna do a new analysis, let's just take a quick look at that. You've got uh, return shapes that interact with the minimum bounding rectangle. 
um, return shapes closest to another. Now these require shape files and I don't have that, uh, but not all of them do. So you can take a look at each one of these and see some pretty interesting things that you can do with the spatial capabilities of the tool. So again, there's a great presentation on this. Uh, I'll give a link to it that goes into more detail. But for me, all I really cared about was geocoding the addresses in a batch job. And this thing did that quite nicely. So now that we've got all of the data that we want to render on a map geocoded, let's go into Apex and let's take a look at what that looks like. And the first thing I'll say is that there's some really good, um, there's a good demo uh, sample, a sample application that I suggest that you install it, install. Um, there's a sample maps one here, that's from the Oracle Apex GitHub download page. And there's another one here. And again, I'll give you the link to that and it shows some additional capabilities here. So this sample map, so I'm gonna use this just to, to show you uh, how that works. So the sample applications are on this page here, github.io slash apex. I'd be mindful of this version by default, it comes up with 22.1. Um, I had to upgrade to 21.2 to get some of the spatial features I wanted to use. So be mindful that if you want 21.2, uh, you need to specify it in this drop down list. And you can do that by just using the arrow down key. And the ones that I wanted to point out, I, you know, I'd encourage you to look at any and all of these if, if you want to get more familiar with Apex. But the one that I wanted to download is this sample maps one. And it, you just a zip file, you download it and then import it into Apex. Uh, I've already done that. You go into the app builder and you go to import here and it imports it. Again, pick the 21.2, make sure that you're at that level and you can check that. Um, you can check that here about, I'm at 21.25. So make sure you're at 21.2, then pick the 21.2 sample map and then install it. And then you can start playing around with it. So if we run the application, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Uh, I'm gonna log in my demo user. And this is what comes up. Um, there's a lot of sample stuff that's in here. It installs the underlying table. You saw the EBA tables or EBS tables in SQL Developer. And then you can start exploring these wonderful features. Um, very cool. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to build something on top of this that was specific for my customer. And so let's take a look at how to do that. Let's go back to App Builder. Um, I've deleted all my stuff. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna say create page. And I'm going to, I know there's a lot of choices in here. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, our customers are using spreadsheets. So I like to have a grid-like presentation and view. I want to tell you that if you want to put buttons, I mean, there's a couple of approaches here. You, if you can configure Oracle Apex to generate and populate that geometry column when you save the record, or you can put a button and create a dynamic action. Um, the recordings will cover the dynamic action with the button. That has to be on the form. So you do need a form. I would like to have a combination report and a form. That way you can browse it like Excel, but then bring up the pop-up form to actually do that geocoding. So let's, let's do that right now. The other thing I wanna point out is there's a map one here. Once you've done that geocoding, um, you can go to the map and it's super simple. Uh, we'll do that afterwards. Let's take a look at the maintenance of this geocoding data. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go to report with form. And we'll do page number three, and I'll just say customer report with form, page number four. 
So that's page number three is the report, the grid. And when you click on one of the records in page number three, you're gonna navigate to page number four. I love these wizards. Um, you can build this all stuff from scratch. And if you were a, a crack apex developer, you might do that. I'm not. And so I love wizards. So form name is customer form next. And I'm not going to put it on the menu. I'm going to directly navigate here. I'm not going to pollute my, my menu for my sample. Uh, you can create a navigation entry, super simple, and you can nest it and do all kinds of things in the menu there. And the table view is, remember, it's our customer's table. And so, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect some of these columns. We've got a lot of different columns that I don't care about. Let's take a look at that. I don't care about gender, marital status. Um, so there's the items I care about. And let's generate this page. And you do need the primary key column. It's cust ID. We don't have a secondary key column. Just hit create. And let's run the page and see what it looks like. Now, at this stage, we do not have the geocoding wired up, just so you know. Well, let's take a look at it first. Here it is here, and here's how you can edit and update that. Now, you can see that the geometry is here. It was from the batch geocoding, but if I want to change the address, then this obviously needs to be updated as well, or if I insert a new record, um, you can do that. So let's just open this up here. And you notice this Candace Floyd, etc. Now in here, you don't really have any, um, you know, we need to, we need to make some changes to this form in order to support the geocoding. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to edit page four. I am going to create a page item. And the page item is P4. Geocoder, and we want to call it Geocoder there. And let's scroll down. So we need to set this not as a text field, but as a geocoded address. That's kind of key, and that's new in 21.2. So geocoded address, it now wants you to, you can specify a static country code. We actually have a column for that. And if it, had, if it said United States, it would pick that up, but the safest is to use the ISO code. And we do have the ISO code here, country ISO code. So it's picking that up. I have a structured address. If you had an unstructured address, it would be delimited fields. So you would have your, you know, in my case, my address, comma, city, comma, state, um, we do have a structured address. All those items are in separate columns. So we're going to do the mapping here. So street address is here. The city uh, postal code is here. And the city is here. And let's just map this region is actually in the United States, it's st or Canada state province. So now we've done the mapping. The last thing we need to do is to specify the um, update in the geo uh, the geometry field. So that's in source customer form. It's customer form in the source from region. And the column is GC geometry. And the data type is SDO geometry. And so that's pretty much all you need. I'm going to hit save. So on this form, there is one more thing I want to do. This is a primary key. And by default, Apex hides it because it feels that it should be normally perhaps populated with a sequence or populated in Apex with a primary key function. So I'm going to make it 
display. It's going to be text field, save that. And then when we run it, we can actually add, actually, let me change the name of that, edit page four. Um, by default, it's called new. And then let's call it cust, save that. And let's run it. And so now let's add a new customer. Let's add customer 999999, customer first name, Derek. And there's my address, Ridgefield, Washington, phone number. This is wrong. This is US. So let's, um, let's save that and see what happens here. So I'm going to create it. And the first thing it does is it looks for my address in the here data set. It's what all the cars use. Um, it's a universal uh, set of data for, uh, for addresses around the world. And so you can actually type in a, a street name here in a city and it'll pop up with all the different addresses. So you say, say okay, and then hit create. And we row created. Let's go back to SQL Developer. Let's take a look at that. Customers. So there it is there. I just added this one just right this moment. You'll notice that it saved the geometry. So that's kind of the intended functionality. The other cool thing that Apex will do for you is show you that location on the map. And so... Let's go to Candace here. Let's go to the customer ID. I'm having an issue with my screen. So let's just refresh that. And the really, really cool thing is, so now you have a region down below the form and when you either enter or update or navigate from the report, you're gonna see the location on this region below the form itself. So if I was to add a new record or update a record and change it and save it, it would geocode and render the location on a map below, below the form itself here. So that is really, really simple to set up. So the last thing I want to show you, at least in Apex, let's go to here. We're going to create one more page here. We've got three report. We've got the report with a form, a drill through to the form. We've got the form itself. So let's create a new page. I want to show you how easy it is to create uh, a form with customers on a map. I'm going to call it page. Uh, I'm going to give it page five. We're going to put customers on a map. And we'll hit next. We're not going to add it to the menu. Our table is the customer's table. We hit next. And the geometry column is GC geometry. And the tooltip column, we'll put it to uh, last name. We can uh, create a faceted search page as well. If we do that, we'll have to add the facets on there. No, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it as is. Let's just create the page. So let's run that. And if we take the defaults, you've got the, uh, a number of controls here by default. And we're going to go back in this form and add a few additional ones. You'll notice this is taking a little while. It's got 55,000 rows across the world in different countries. Um, and you can see that here. And you can literally just uh, scroll in and out. Those are the default controls that are on here. Let me edit the page five. And we'll make some changes here. If we go to customers on a map, go to attributes up here. There's some additional controls. Mouse wheel zoom, I like that. There's an overview map, which is like a, an embedded small world map to show you where you are. We'll leave that. Get the browser lo location. That's pretty cool because 
you can just click on that and it'll say, where am I? And it'll find you in the, on the world, wherever you are physically, you know, physically where the browser is. And there's a circle tool, a distance tool. Let's just select that and save. And now we've got a few more options in here. Again, we rerun it, it's gonna take a minute. Now you'll notice that we've got these extra controls here. You've got the rectangle zoom, which was not on here before. And the other thing is I use a, a mouse, a roller item on the mouse, on my mouse, so I can just roll my finger to do the zoom. And then I can do a rectangle zoom. We can zo zoom into my current location, a circle, and you can do a measurement thing. Let's click this one. And let's zoom in on these records here. And so it'll automatically do that. And of course your tooltip is the last name. It's on here. And all of this is really, really simple to set up in Apex. Uh, you've got a little more functionality in, in Oracle OAC. We'll take a look at that, but this is all, a lot of this is new in 21.2. So. Super simple. So let's move on to OAC now. So before we go into Oracle OAC, Oracle OAC requires longitude and latitude. And recall when we created this table and we populated it, we populated it with the native, um, the native spatial data type. Apex needs that, or at least needs that if you want to make things a lot simpler. So now we could have probably populated that as well using the uh, Spatial Studio tool, but you can also compute that on the fly. And so I created a view that we'll use in Apex called Customers V, and it's got a conversion right here directly uh, on the fly in the database. So we'll, we'll be looking at this in OAC. So let's switch over to OAC now. So let's log into OAC now and take a look at that data. We're gonna start by, we already have a connection to the database and we're gonna create a new data set. We're gonna select the DGC demo connection. We'll go to demo. We'll add the customer's V to the palette here. And when this comes up, we're gonna to navigate to the customer's V here. So navigate to here. Now, so customer ID, let's, well, there's a few things you need to do. Click on the icon. This is really an attribute. I'm not gonna add it up. Um, and you'll notice here, longitude and latitude. Let's click on that. Click here, set it as an attribute. And then when you click here, you'll notice location details. Now it has to be set as an attribute and it's longitude, it's figured that out, say, okay. And we'll go to latitude, latitude, set it as an attribute. And then select here, location details. Now, some of our data actually, you'll see an invalid there. There's some nulls or some addresses not found. Don't worry about that. And let's save this. Save as customers. Say OK. And at this point, you can go directly into creating a visualization workbook right off this. So let's do that, create workbook. And you'll notice here that the longitude and latitude are showing as little pin. And if we select it on here, you'll notice it automatically figures out that, hey, this is a map. It's got a location. Let's view the data on here. And at this point, you can continue to build out all kinds of interesting insights into the data based on the, the location. Uh, it's got the same similar selections that Apex has, radial selection. It's got polygon selection, rectangle selection as well. 
um, and and you can set set the tool tips and all that. Um, but yeah, this is just a very quick peek in how to do that. You'll notice we're using longitude and latitude here versus Apex using the STO geometry, but you can actually handle both quite elegantly. I hope you found this useful. Uh, good luck in building your applications.